Hi everyone, uh, I hope you're doing well today. Um, I, I felt like I needed to do a uh, follow-up on, uh, on the last video about the uh, mouthpiece blowing exercise. And the reason is that as with many things in playing the trumpet, uh, there, there are many things that are paradoxical. As a matter of fact, um, uh, a few years ago, um, Jim Pandolfi had just retired from the Met, and uh, we invited him to come up to NEC and do a master class. And, uh, and that's one of the first things he said in, uh, in the class is, many things about playing the trumpet are paradoxical. So you can look that up in the dictionary uh, to see what it means. I don't know if I'll give you a good definition or not, but uh, it's basically something is true, but it doesn't seem likely to be true. It seems like there's conflicting information uh, so it's kind of confusing to the intellectual mind. And there are many things in playing the trumpet that are like that. And this is one of them. Um, we were, I was showing how forcefully we were blowing last time. And the, and, and the paradoxical thing about it is, most of the time when we're playing the trumpet, we're doing exactly the opposite. We're blowing gently, smoothly, steadily, with as free flow as possible. Uh, we're not forcing the air at all. And that's kind of what we were doing with the, with the mouthpiece blowing exercise last time. So there are a couple of things that I want to throw into balance um, this concept and that'll hope, hopefully allow you to, to figure out for yourselves in your own physical experience uh, what the truth is in what seems to be paradoxical. Okay, so last time just to review, <clears throat> relaxed breathing. Quiet, throwing the air very strongly, so you're getting that whistling sound in the mouthpiece if it's possible. The goal being throwing a fastball relaxed. It's fine to have plenty of power, but if you can't apply it with control, if you can't apply it with precision, with delicacy, then the power can be more destructive than helpful. And that's, that's the case with a lot of things on the trumpet. So, um, and in life, I suppose. Uh, so uh, what I wanna show you today is a different way of doing the mouthpiece blowing exercise. Some of it's still related to power. Some of it's related to uh, things that are much, much more subtle and delicate. Now here's something to keep in mind. The, uh, uh, the fact is, when we have greater intensity in terms of the feedback in our system, uh, in other words, things are very loud in our sensory perception, um, then what happens is they cover up, just like when there's a lot of background noise, it's hard to hear the other person talking. If you're in a, in a loud club or in a loud environment with a lot of people talking, a lot of noise, it's difficult to hear the other person. You have to shout, you have to bring your intensity level up. So many of the things we do on the trumpet are extremely subtle and fine. And with such intensity at the same time, like with what I've been just showing you with this mouthpiece blowing exercise, it becomes, uh, that, that intensity covers up the subtle things. So uh, first I'll show you a variation on the mouthpiece blowing exercise. <clears throat> and the difference is, I told you not to put any lip tissue in the cup, not to block the airflow. Uh, with with a tongue not to choke it off with the throat to keep the body loose and throw the air great you're going to do the same thing only this time you're going to form something that's close to your embouchure actually even your embouchure and this might take some work some experimentation on your part but let's see if we can make this happen so if i if i go there's no focus but if i pretend that i'm blowing out a candle So I'm letting that air go freely and I'm allowing my lips to form in such a way that they form a stream of air. And this is similar to what you do playing the flute, for example. You're flowing a, a quiet, strong stream with lots of spin energy to it, but that's very, uh, very smooth uh, and very stable. So if you put your embouchure together the way you normally would to buzz on the mouthpiece, Okay, so I buzzed on the mouthpiece. I got my armature set up pretty close to where I want it. Now what I'm gonna do is without changing the amount of lip in the cup, I'm going to allow the air to flow more freely through the system. So I'm gonna go 
and relax where the aperture is. Just relax this a little bit to let go and let the air flow. This is one of the most important things in trumpet playing. And again, it's paradoxical. The higher we play, the more we tend to be squeezing that aperture and thus holding the air back. And what you want to do is let it go freely and still keep that focused aperture. That's difficult. You can't figure out how to do it, but you can discover it and train your body to do it through repetition and with attention, as we talked about before. So if I think about that candle again, I have a delicate, tiny little air stream. And even when I'm blowing quite strongly, that air stream remains focused. Now don't worry if the opening in your lips, if the aperture in your lips, means opening, aperture, uh, flexes and opens up. Flexibility in the aperture is exactly what we're going for here. Uh, when you blow stronger, you're flowing more air through, the aperture easily opens. And when you take your foot off the gas smoothly, you have control, then the aperture closes automatically. And this is how the embouchure and the aperture, uh, the embouchure, the aperture, and the wind power work together in order to find a, a sense of balance. Uh, we'll talk about that in other videos. I'm getting a little off the track right now. Let's get back to this variation. So the variation is normal embouchure, let the air go. Don't pull the lip out of the cup. Don't make any other modifications, just let the air go. You see, I haven't pulled my lip out of the cup. I haven't stuffed it back in there again. I'm leaving it set up in the same way that my natural embouchure would be set up. And that's really, really important because now you're building a, a step, a progression toward the blowing exercise, the original one with everything open, to blowing with your embouchure form. Now, I think it's helpful if you think about aiming the air. This works for a lot of people. I talk about the candle, blowing a candle out. The farther away the candle is, you have to have enough flow and you have to have enough focus in order to blow the candle out. The farther away it is, the more difficult it is to maintain uh, focus, and the flow will naturally fall off as it gets more distant. Now we're gonna do think about something much more delicate, like if you had a feather. I should have some visual aids today. I'll, I'll do that in the future. <laughs> if I had a feather and I'm blowing it very, very lightly, with a gentle, smooth, quiet airstream, you'll see that feather feather fluttering in the wind. That's at one end of the spectrum in terms of power. You want to cover the entire range from uh, as delicate as blowing, gently blowing a feather to as powerful as what we talked about last time, like uh, the Cuban hurricane, Arturo Sandoval. <sighs> That's tremendous wind power. Okay, so I'm going to do that again for you, and this time show you what's happening with the embouchure. Now later on I hope to be doing some closer in stuff so you'll be able to tell what's happening a little bit more critically. Um, now of course my embouchures, you know, we all have lips, tongue, teeth, but my embouchure is going to look different than yours. Uh, but we're satisfying the same principles uh, as we're working on these things. So. Um, the main goal is to allow, form your embouchure and then allow the air to pass so that you can do the, uh, you can get that whistling sound on the mouthpiece. That means you have a tremendous amount of flexibility in the muscular control inside the mouthpiece. You can let the lips go completely um, and uh, allow that air to pass, or you can allow them to, to focus down and, uh, and, and accelerate that airstream and aim that airstream. There's one other thing I want to, I want to throw at you today, and it's related. And that, that's a, there's a funny little exercise that you can try. This is easier on a bigger mouthpiece. For example, if you have a trombone mouthpiece, bass trombone mouthpiece, uh, <clears throat> then it's, uh, it's easier to do this. But what I'm actually doing, you hear that whistling sound. I'm finding a very, very small, very soft, uh, very gentle, at, uh, aperture. 
uh, and what I think is happening, and again, you scientists out there can, can help me understand this if I'm wrong, uh, I think that I'm forming a coherent airstream. That airstream is striking at a certain part of the mouthpiece, probably the edge of the throat or something like that. And that sets up these little vortices in the airstream and that produces a vibration. It produces that whistling sound. This would be similar to um, you know, what we do if you just plug the mouthpiece with your thumb, one end. If you can focus the air at the edge of the rim, just like you would on a flute, do it on a Coke bottle, when Coke used to come in bottles, uh, do, it on a, do it on a flute. And that's a great way to practice. Now we can't see what's going on, but you can visualize it so that you're kind of aiming that airstream and just mess around with it, experiment, try different things. But the, the key thing is the blow is very, very gentle. So it's at one end of the spectrum, as gentle as possible. The air's still flowing, it's still lively, um, but it's very, very quiet and, and gentle. It also has intentionality behind it. So it's not just, uh, you're not just blowing randomly, it's, you're being very intentional with how you apply it, similar to what a flute player has to do in order to produce a beautiful sound on their instrument. Let me do that for you once again. So it's very soft. So my air is flowing pretty easily, very easily, and very freely, but I'm not, and I'm not blowing hard. So it's kind of the opposite of you notice the muscles around here are firming considerably. You can see them engaging in order to, in order to support that aperture. Otherwise, you tend to lose control over it. So uh, there is a great deal more to cover. And the real interesting part is how all these things fit together. Uh, you know, the breath control and the aperture. That's one of the key things in your sound production. Now, next time I plan to talk about um, uh, the breathing tube, which is a low um, resistance exercise, as opposed to this one, which is a high resistance exercise. And you want to be covering the whole range of resistance with your breath control. So you become equally adept equally skilled at um, being able to apply the air in exactly the right way that it needs to be applied in order to produce the sound that you're trying to get. Um, so I know this is, these are kind of weird exercises. Uh, they're examples of a creative approach that we're going to be getting into more and more. You must become curious and engaged. You must start from that place of not knowing, not understanding and go through the wonderful process of discovery, experimentation, possibilities, using your imagination, visualization. All these things are going to apply to everything we're doing because this exercise by itself is probably not going to do very much for you unless you understand why you're doing it and how it connects to trumpet playing. That's the most important thing. Um, so I, I, uh, I hope that you're going to be uh, able to use some of these things. Uh, again, feel free to communicate with me uh, questions or uh, curiosities or different things that you come up with that you notice. As we share these things, it's going to be helpful to, to every player um, to give us a deeper understanding of what's going on. So um, I hope you're having a good day where you are, and I will, uh, I will see you in the next installment. By the way, if you haven't seen the first video on the, on the mouthpiece bowling exercise, please watch that first. It'll solve a lot of, uh, of issues for you. So um, again, I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.